Hello. I've been doing a bit more work with this Odroid thing recently with the intention of making an RC transmitter from it. And I managed to get the hardware SPI working with the RF24 radio module. So I just wanted to make a quick video to basically just to show off that I managed to get it working. Um, I have a screen now and I also have a little keyboard and the screen is definitely going to be part of my transmitter but the keyboard most likely will be as well if I can mount it on there somewhere conveniently. Uh, so this screen at the moment is running from the battery. I'll be using a bigger LiPo of course for the real purpose but for now this little one manages for about half an hour or so and so this battery is running the screen and also running the uh, RF24 module here because the reason for that and also the reason for having this level shifter in the middle a little bit hard to see there but there's a, a level shifter in between there um, and that was a bit of a bummer that I had to use that actually but the reason is because all of the power levels on the Odroid here are 1.8 volts but the RF24 needs 3 volts um, so that's what that's all for and there's actually one wire here the white one is the chip enable wire and I'm not using the level shifter for that because well the main reason is that the level shifter only allows for four wires so I'm using those for my SPI wires here so this is um, slave select and then there's clock MISO and MOSI there and then over there we have ground and VCC um, but I just thought I'd try without using a level shifter for this and it turns out that it doesn't make a damn bit of difference whether this wire is here or not I can take it off uh, plug it in pull it out doesn't matter it just seems to run fine either way so um that's quite convenient because I'll want to use these other pins here for an I squared C connection to get my joystick inputs into there um, from I'm probably gonna have to use an Arduino Pro Mini to use uh, to get the um, analog inputs because there's no analog inputs on here which is rather unfortunate but anyway um, so let's uh, see what this does just before I do that I'll recap a couple of things that I'm going to use with it because obviously we have to send and receive from something right so what I have here is my cheap ass transmitter that has an Arduino Pro Mini inside there and this is obviously a transmitter and this transmits to this thing which is my receiving tester thingy and this just has a little OLED screen on there so we can see what's going on My goodness, come on. All right, so when I move the sticks on here, we'll see a little picture image of the sticks moving on the screen there. So that's receiving and sending between these two. So I'm going to use these as my endpoints to check with the Odroid. So I'll just turn that off. And I'll turn that off. So they're both off now. Now I'm going to have to shove you right down here because this is the only way I think I can record this. Unfortunately the Odroid doesn't have enough horsepower to run the FFmpeg screen grabbing thing that I normally use for my videos so I'm just gonna have to do it like this. Uh, so what I have running here is a little test program that I wrote and it's using the same packets as the transmitter and the receiver thing that we just saw. So when I start this up, oh, hold on, we have to pseudo that one. There we go. Um, so that's waiting for packets to arrive. And if I just see if I can give you a view of this. And we'll see when I switch this on that we get some numbers showing up. And I can move the sticks. Uh, yeah, I knew this was going to be tricky. Okay.
So there we go. So it um, seems to be working just fine. So that's uh, receiving. And then for sending, I have something very similar, except it's SPI send. And what this does is it just <coughs> sends packets as if it was a transmitter. So, so keep your eye on, on the receiver screen here. And when I run this, we'll see that the receiver is um, showing us what the Odroid is sending to it. So it's just making a circle of each stick and turning them round and round like that, that's all. Just for a test. Um, so if you're still watching this video, you may be interested in the code that does this. And it's basically the same as um, how everything works on Arduino because the library that this is using is basically forked from the very common libraries that people use on Arduino for this. Uh, so the source code uh, is like this. We just have pretty much exactly the same kind of thing we use on regular Arduino, except the chip enable and clock select not pins here are entirely irrelevant, as I found out. Um, so I'm going to change this a little bit and tidy everything up and I think I'll submit a pull request to the maintainer of this library and see if he wants to include this um, in his library. So that's how you set it up and then the receiving program that we saw first is just, it's just the regular Arduino stuff really. Open reading pipe, start listening um, and then we just receive a packet and print out the contents of it. Um, I found that because this um, CPU is a lot faster than the regular Arduino Pro Mini or whatever that I've been using so far, I put this in here, otherwise it wastes a lot of CPU time. Um, in fact, let's just, let's just run this. Oh, we're already running one, okay. Let's see. So we can get an idea here of So this this is still running, right? This is this the program that's sending the rotating stick positions. So that's still running. <clears throat> and we can see it's using around about 10% of all CPUs. Hold on a second. That sounds a little bit high. Uh, so it's that one, 5%, and this one, 1%. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so it's about it's about 6% by the looks of it. I just remember that when we're looking at this view, uh, the display of this view chews up some CPU as well. So it's more, more like about 6% of the CPU. Um, but anyway, if you don't have this sleep in there, obviously you're going to be wasting um, CPU cycles like that. So anyway, that's the sending, uh, the receiving side, and then the sending side to send those rotating stick positions is uh, we just do open writing pipe, and then I have a counter, and I'm using the counter, I'm ticking up that counter and using sign and cos to make some um, positions for the the dots to turn around in a circle, and then I'm sending that every five milliseconds. So this is a this is microsecond sleep here, so this is five milliseconds. And that's all there is to it. So um, I'm quite pleased that I managed to get this working. It took it took quite a while, and I would have done it sooner if I hadn't waited three weeks to get that level shifter in the mail. It's funny, you know, sometimes when you buy things from Banggood, they take ages, and sometimes they are quick. So I'm not not sure what's up with that. Um, but anyway, if you want to follow development of this. Um, I will probably submit a pull request in the next few days to this library here. So this is the the library that I started with to to make this. 
I've been using the Greg Copeland fork so far for all my other stuff because it works perfectly well and I didn't want to mess with stuff that's working perfectly well but according to Greg Copeland himself this library here is much more advanced and optimized and um, robust and so on so <clears throat> since I was starting something fairly new I thought I would start with this and work on this and I'll commit my changes to here maybe and this one already had a um, support for the Raspberry Pi oh, I'm sorry no, Rap Rapsberry Pi that may be something similar but um, so there's a folder here for all the Raspberry Pi stuff so I had to basically make another folder like that for all the Odroid stuff because it was fairly different some of it's the same but some of it's uh, was fairly different so uh, if you're interested in this and the reason I'm not sort of tidying up this right now and pre preparing it for you already is because I know the Odroid is not as common as the regular Arduino so there's probably not really that many people out there that will be interested in this code at least not right now but uh, anyway if you're interested just let me know and I'll maybe mail you um, when I actually get this submitted so you can take a look at it on your Odroid if you have one Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next in the next installation of this project update. Bye.